All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is my Springbok versus Argentina match preview. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. As always, I love to hear what you guys think. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. If you found value in it, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. It really helps you in my journey to become the number one sports content creator in South Africa. This game is set up to be an absolute cracker in Argentina at 11 p.m. on Saturday. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and let's get into the video. A little bit of history around this fixture. South Africa have won their last eight of the last 10 matches by more than 15 points, a margin of 15 points. Just remember that if you're having a bit of a go tomorrow. And of course, the box have won nine of their last 10 matches against Argentina. So the Springboks go into this as heavy favorites, but we'll get into a couple of the stats now and why I actually think this could be a pretty tight game and a really, really interesting first half. As mentioned earlier, the Springboks, of course, go into this match as heavy favorites. But it's interesting, the stats are pretty similar of the first four rounds of the Rugby Championship. And why I think this has some value in it and some, some telltale signs is because we played the exact same opposition, twice against the Wallabies, twice against the All Blacks. The Springboks can't get caught with their pants down. We know that the Springboks tend to come alive in the last quarter of the game, but so do Argentina. If you look at the Argentina-Australia game and the second one they played, Argentina scored four tries in the last 10 minutes. They come alive in the last quarter as well. When I say we can't get caught with our pants down by Argentina in the first half is because traditionally, Argentina tend to start well against the Springboks, especially in Argentina. If you look at the last 10 matches that we played against Argentina in Argentina, we've trailed at halftime six of those 10 matches. That is a really high percentage to trail. This coupled with the fact that we played in Argentina with a slightly less experienced side and guys let's be honest Argentina these guys know how to get up for a game Especially given the fact that Argentina are able to win this rugby championship Should they beat the world champions an opportunity to beat the world champions at home? They will be up for this You know often people say you can't win a rugby match on emotion and I agree with that an emotion only lasts so long But somehow the Argentines tend to let tend to get this emotion to last an exceptionally long time If you look at all their games a lot of it's been based on emotion. All these games that they've beaten, all, the All Blacks, they come out, they find a different gear, which is why I think this game is going to be really, really key. It will be so important for the box to start well. You can't let the Argentines into the game this early, especially given the fact that their goal-kicking success rate is 92%. The box will also need to be focused on their discipline. This is where I think Salman Murat plays a massive role. As a young leader in the team, as a young captain, he will need to take charge of this. Santi Carreras is the second highest point scorer in the in in the rugby championship thus far and they are kicking at 92% at goal. This is why we can't give away silly penalties in the first half. Given the fact that we know traditionally Argentina start well in the first half, we need to be really, really, really disciplined in our half because it could easily go three, six, nine points ahead of us and then we chase in the game. We don't want to be going into half time behind and allowing these Argentine guys to get a bit of a sniff because I think that's when they get raised emotionally, especially in front of a home crowd. It is so key that we start well and I think discipline is going to be the cornerstone of that. Of course, we know the prowess of Santi Carreras, who's been the second highest point scorer in the competition and goal kicking at a premium. We also look at a guy like Pablo Matera, who is the second highest amount of carries in the rugby championship. We came really effectively with some awesome post contact meters. And a guy like Gonzalez at the lineouts has actually has the third most steals in the rugby championship, which shouldn't worry us too much, but we'll get into why that is now. And of course, we've spoken about the prowess of Gonzalez at, at lineout time, but this won't worry us too much, I don't think. And I don't think they're going to have too much of an advantage ahead of us because Ruan Nokia and Ibn Etzbeth, Ruan Nokia leading it, Ibn Etzbeth in close second, have the most line-out wins in the rugby championship thus far. As well as Malcolm Marks and Bongi and Bonambi having the most successful line-out throws in the rugby championship. I think we're going to use this line-out as a real attacking weapon and a platform to attack at and really attack that vacuum and have, a, have, and have it as a base to attack off of. Especially given the fact that Malcolm Marks is the highest, uh, is the highest try scorer in this competition, I think we'll go to our mall when we have the opportunity to, especially in their 22 if we get penalties. I don't see us kicking to poles actually. I see us going for the corner and really using our line out to attack and Malcolm Marks to score tries, especially given the fact that he's starting. What I like about having Eben Etzebeth on the bench is that we'll have Ruan Nokia who's top of line out wins in this, in this rugby championship starting and then we'll have Eben Etzebeth to come off and really continue that momentum so that we're able to use this as a platform throughout the whole match. A lot has been said actually about the Springboks expansion 
Atlanta style of playing this new style, this new philosophy that Tony Brown's been brought in. But actually, if you look at it, the Springboks have actually kicked quite a bit, but they've kicked effectively. And they've got the most regained possession of any kicks. So what this means is they'll kick, but also we gain possession back, which means we're allowed to play in that transition, which is where our outside backs come alive. The Springboks have kicked 26 times in which we've retained possession in those 26 times. It's 15 more than any other team in this competition. So we're still kicking quite a lot, but we retain the position off those kicks. And what happens there is we, we retain the position and we're able to play quickly in that transition play, which is where our outside backs come alive, which is what I'm really looking forward to, especially with my Pimpy back in the mix and Kurtley Orenser, as well as Fassi at the back. The Springboks have kicked really effectively. Often when we kick in, it's actually resulting in opposition area. They've kicked and they've kicked long and they've kicked really contestable kicks, which, was result, which has resulted in opposition area, which allows us to get the ball back. While we're on the topic of kicking, I think Andre Pollard is going to have to have a really, really, really crucial game because the Springboks goal kicking success rate is sitting at 68%. Considering the fact that Argentina have a 92% goal kick success rate, Andre Pollard is going to have to be on song. This is why I actually think that when Marnie Libok comes on, Marnie will go to 10, Andre to 12, Lucania Amos shift to 13, and Jesse will get a much needed rest. This allows Marnie to come on and play his expansive style of rugby, but also allows Andre to still be there and take over the kicking duties from Marnie. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and where this game is going to be won or lost. Those are the, just the key areas that I've picked up. I'd love to know what you guys think. I always learn quite a bit from you guys when you let me know in the comments. If you like the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one. Enjoy your Bok Day.